So unless you've been living under a rock for the past 24 days, it is 2015. And what I'd like to do at the start of every year is kind of like preview um, a bunch of different movies that are going to be coming out in the next 12 months. And I know that a lot of other YouTube movie people like putting up like their top 10 list of their most anticipated movies of 2015. I don't really want to do that because I feel like I'm just going to be putting expectations um, for these movies to myself. And I know that a lot of them probably might not be very good. I'm hoping they're all great, but you know, I just kind of want to avoid that. So I'm literally on Wikipedia right now and I'm just going to scroll through the list of movies that are coming out um, and just give my quick thoughts on them, like, you know, impromptu. Like, I didn't prepare any of this or anything. Take note though that I'm only really following the American release calendar. Um, a lot of these movies might not even end up here in the Philippines. But yeah, we're starting off, I'm pretty much gonna skip January because it's the end of January and like nothing really interesting has come out yet. So yeah. Um, so starting in Feb, um, this movie Jupiter Ascending that was supposed to come out last year has been pushed all the way to 2015. And I'm personally kind of nervous about that because whenever that happens like it just it's not really a good sign and it's still coming out in february which is not a good place for movies to premiere however it still looks interesting because it is the wachowskis um and it is channing tatum and eddie redmayne in this movie playing like you know really kind of fantastical roles so if anything i'm hoping we get at least an original sci-fi kind of thing even if it's not good per se i'm hoping it's original then you have the spongebob movie sponge out of water which I honestly think looks kind of bad, but I'm probably going to see it anyway because I watched the first one way back in the day. Um, you know, I just don't understand the logic in this movie because in the first Spongebob movie, when they came out of the water, they like dried up and it was really sad. But here, they're out of the water and they're superheroes, so it's kind of strange. I'm not sure. Spongebob hasn't really been good in a long time anyway. Oh, and then you got Fifty Shades of Grey, which I actually want to see just because I think it's going to be like a big thing and I want to be in the conversation. And if it's bad, I want to hate it like with good reason that I actually watched it and I can't wait to like just walk up to the ticket lady and say you know just um, um one, one ticket for 50 shades of gray please there is one movie though in February that I really kind of am excited for because I feel like since uh, 2012 there's always sorry 2013 there's always been like one good movie that comes out early in the year 2013 had side effects 2014 of course had the Lego movie and here we have Kingsman the Secret Service which is being directed by Matthew Vaughn has Colin Firth in it uh, and Michael Caine, Samuel Jackson, like it really looks really really cool. Like it's it it looks like a James Bond movie, but on on crack, and it's just really it looks really fun. And I'm hoping it is very fun. Moving on to March, you have Chappie, which is the next uh, sci-fi film by Neil Blomkamp, who of course directed uh, District Nine and Elysium. I wasn't as impressed with Elysium as District Nine, um, and Chappie honestly doesn't look like as mind blowing as District Nine. But again, I'm just holding out hope because I really really like his visuals, his directorial style. Then in March 13, you have Cinderella, the live action version, which I'm really also kind of skeptical about because, you know, Maleficent was just okay in my opinion, but I really think that, you know, these kind of fairy tale kind of things, they work better when they're animated, you know, that's just like for me a better form for these kinds of stories. And, you know, it just feels like they're going to be telling the same story all over again. I don't want them to put a random feminist twist in there just for the sake of having it because, you know, it's just going to kind of ruin the purity of the thing, I think. And for some strange reason, in March, Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension is coming out, which is the latest Paranormal Activity movie, which will probably not be good, but I'm still going to see because the series is kind of a guilty pleasure for me. Then in April, you have Furious 7, and I have not actually watched any of the Fast and the Furious movies, although I am interested because this is being directed by James Wan, who did, of course, The Conjuring, so it'll be interesting to see what he brings to the action genre. Everyone's talking about this movie Unfriended, which is like a horror thing, but through like Skype or whatever. I have not seen the trailer. Um, I, I, I can't say anything about it, but I'm probably going to end up tagging along with some friends to watch it, I don't know. But let's get to the meat of 2015. Um, in May, sorry, um, start of the summer season, of course, you have Avengers Age of Ultron. Who is not excited for this? This looks so, so cool. It looks so much darker than the first Avengers. Um, Joss Whedon's back to direct it and write it. All the actors are back. You've got, of course, James Spader's Ultron. You have uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver in there. And, you know, I really feel like this will be the movie that really shakes up the Marvel Universe because they need, you know, to start changing up the lineup. They need, you know, really big, disastrous things to happen. They need to start killing off characters because these actors' contracts are coming to an end. And I think it'll be really kind of useful for them to, you know, end up killing some characters because you get to start off on a new slate, you know, maybe you get to start putting out more MCU movies with a different tone. Like, just really make your franchise evolve. 
Then May 15, you have Mad Max Fury Road. I have not seen any other Mad Max movie, but seeing the trailer for this, especially on the big screen, is heaven. Like I told my friends, um, even if this movie does not have a plot in it, but it just looks that good and has you know that much action, I think I'm still going to be satisfied. It looks absolutely bonkers. Of course, George Miller, who directed the first movies, is about to direct this. Tom Hardy, Charlize Theron, Nicholas Holt is completely um, unrecognizable. It just looks so, so cool. You have Pitch Perfect 2 also coming out the same day. Uh, I have not seen Pitch Perfect 1. Again, I feel like I'm just going to be dragged by my friends to watch this, but it's interesting because Elizabeth Banks is directing this, so that'll be kind of interesting. Then Tomorrowland on May 22, which is, of course, Brad Bird's next film. He has not made a bad movie yet. It looks fantastic from that one teaser trailer. Again, I'm just hoping for another just original sci-fi movie. Then in June, you have Insidious Chapter 3. I have not seen Insidious Chapter 2. I saw parts of Ins the first Insidious. I was too scared to finish it. Um, probably gonna watch it again because I have this new found appreciation, I think, for horror. I don't know. Paper Towns, new John Green adaptation. Didn't know that was happening. Jurassic World, of course, with Chris Pratt as the lead. Um, I'm actually kind of a bit pessimistic about this because, I don't know, I just think the idea of splicing dinosaurs and making like a big Frankenstein dinosaur isn't a very intriguing idea, at least for me, but I'm hoping that, you know, at least Chris Pratt might be able to bring some charisma to this movie, but, you know, I, mean, I just want to see dinosaurs too. Then, of course, you have Inside Out coming out on June 19, which I'm really hoping is Pixar's like return to form. I mean, I like Monsters University. I have not seen Brave, actually, but, you know, they, I, as the things I've heard, they haven't really made like a great movie since Toy Story 3, which, granted, is a hard you know, kind of standard to beat, but I'm just really hoping, again, an original uh, kind of animation really brings back the Pixar magic. Then in July, you have Magic Mike Double XL, which I am really looking forward to. I really, really like the first Magic Mike. I think Channing Tatum, who is writing this, by the way, I think he was a he was great in the first Magic Mike. Um, it's definitely much more of a character study than it's just like a stripper movie. You also have Terminator Genesis, which I am very, very scared for. I did not like how the trailer looked. It looked really silly. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger back, of course, but I don't know. It just I don't really have that much faith in this project, unfortunately. You have Minions coming out July 10, which I know everybody loves the Minions. I actually think they're kind of annoying, um, but I will probably see it anyway because I really like Despicable Me. Um, and then Ant-Man comes out on July 17, which I am very, very optimistic about. I'm hoping it's really good. Um, it, it feels like the first MCU movie in a long time that, you know, it's not really trying to be like a part of the MCU. I mean, it feels like its own movie and I'm really hoping it comes off as that. You have Pan, which is a new Peter Pan movie uh, directed by Joe Wright coming out on the 24th. Um, nothing really to say. Again, I'm not that optimistic. You know, I'm not optimistic about a lot of movies. You have the Poltergeist remake, you have the Point Break remake, lots of remakes again. The Fantastic Four reboot, which I'm hoping is good just for Miles Teller and Michael B. Jordan, but again, I just don't feel like the Fantastic Four really translates to film that well. I don't know. Skipping ahead, um, Sinister 2, maybe? Like, Sinister is pretty scary. Um, the new Hitman movie, I suppose. I just skipped all the way past September, like, I don't know, I'm not very interested in any of this. Uh, October, we have Victor Frankenstein with Daniel Radcliffe as Victor Frankenstein, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I'm, I think he's a really good actor, um, and I'm hoping this is better than, like, I Frankenstein or something. I'm hoping this actually tells a real coherent story. Um, you have London Has Fallen, which is the sequel to Olympus Has Fallen, which sounds ridiculous, but you know, Jared Butler kicking butt and Aaron Eckhart also. The Walk is the new movie by Robert Zemeckis, which I'm really looking forward to because I love the guy. Back to the Future is my, one of my favorite movies of all time. You have uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt as uh, the guy who scaled that wire between the two towers. Crimson Peak, which is the new Gu uh, Guillermo del Toro movie, it, he's going back to his horror roots, and whenever you hear about del Toro doing like an old-fashioned horror movie or whatever, you gotta get excited because this guy loves his practical effects. You know, just look at Hellboy and all that stuff, look at Pan's Labyrinth. I mean, even when he doesn't do practical effects, when he does CGI, you get Pacific Rim. So it's just really exciting and you have like a really big cast with Tom Hiddleston, Jessica Chastain. You have the new Steven Spielberg movie, St. James Place, and you know, I don't really know anything about it. You just know that, you know, it's Steven Spielberg directing, which must mean it's gonna be something interesting. And in November, we're entering, like, the Oscar territory. You have Spectre, which is a new James Bond movie, again directed by Sam Mendes, who did Skyfall, which was awesome. Um, Daniel Craig returning. This time you have Ray Fiennes also, again, in it. Christoph Waltz, Lea Seydoux, Monica Bellucci, Ben Wishaw, all these returning people. Batista, um, I don't know, I really, really loved um, Skyfall. I love Casino Royale. 
Um, Quantum Solace, I don't think is terrible, so I'm really, really looking forward to this. I know my friends are looking forward to the Pe Peanuts movie, um, you know, Charlie Brown and all of that. Friday the 13th 3D reboot, what the heck. Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2, I'm very skeptical about this. I didn't like the first Mockingjay, um, you know, as much as some other people did. I don't like the book that much. I'm just hoping Francis Lawrence is able to kind of transcend the source material. You have The Good Dinosaur, which is yet another Pixar movie coming out in 2015, which I'm really hoping again is good. I want Pixar to be like amazing again. Uh, the Martian, which is a new Ridley Scott movie with Matt Damon in it. Um, I don't really know that much about it, but you know Ridley Scott hasn't really been hitting the mark that much for me, you know, lately. So I'm hoping you know if he gets to do this big sci-fi movie again, I mean, hopefully it'll turn out slightly better than Prometheus, which I did think was good. And in December, you've got In the Heart of the Sea, which is directed by Ron Howard, uh, about like the Moby Dick, ins uh, the inspiration for Moby Dick, I think looks amazing. Um, I, I really, really loved Rush, which was Ron Howard's last movie. I think Chris Hemsworth is a real kind of screen presence. Uh, Killian Murphy's in this movie, I didn't know that, and that's, that's great to have him around. I'm gonna skip ahead of December 18, you guys know what's gonna happen December 18, but um, you know, they have Mission Impossible 5 coming out December 25, which I really love, Ghost Protocol, um, and I'm hoping this one's gonna be good. Um, and then you also have The Revenant coming out on Christmas, which is Alejandro Gonzalez and Yaritu's, um new movie about Leonardo DiCaprio getting mauled by a bear, um, his friends rob him and leave him for dead, and he comes back for revenge. I mean, come on. And, you know, again, people are gonna be talking about Leo being nominated for an Oscar. I'm always gonna hope that happens. But let's jump back to December 18, of course. 2015, when I think about 2015, everything is just, you know, the road to Star Wars Episode Seven, The Force Awakens. I mean, just, I feel like even if Star Wars does not end up as good as a lot of people want it to be, I think it will be remembered just for the fact that it just raised so much hype. The teaser trailer alone just blew my mind. And, you know, it's just great to have Star Wars back. Um, I actually do not hate the prequels. I'm one of those people who don't hate the prequels. I think Episode 1 Episode 2 were okay for what they were trying to do. I just I appreciate the fact that the prequels opened up the universe. And I actually think Revenge of the Sith is a better movie than Return of the Jedi. Don't kill me. But yeah, Star Wars, you know, I mean, come on, it's, it's Star Wars. I'm going to be watching this, like, with a ton of people. Like, theaters are going to be full, I swear. This is going to be an event. Alright, so that's 2015 in a nutshell. I'm sure there will be a lot more movies that will be announced that I didn't get to talk about, especially from the various festivals. Of course, local movies also coming out that I was not able to talk about. Um, the only one I'm really thinking of is General Luna, which is Gerald Tarog's new movie, and I, I have complete faith in him. He's my favorite Filipino director. Um, yeah, but what are you guys looking forward to in 2015? Um, are you looking forward to any of the ones I mentioned? Did I miss anything out? Uh, whatever you have to say, please leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation.